All right, and we're back with Filecoin Live here downstairs. Thanks to everyone who's hanging out here today, and, and um, it's just been an awesome program upstairs. Um, you know, great presence here at, at South by Southwest. So I'm, I'm Aaron Stanley with Filecoin Foundation. I'm here with uh, John Paul Farmer, who is a former check, uh, Chief Technology Officer of New York City and is a current advisor to the Filecoin Foundation. And Alan uh, Red Ransel, who is the head of Filecoin Green. So we have lots of colors represented here. Um, and um, John Paul, I'd like to just uh, have you introduce yourself really quick and kind of how you got interested in Filecoin and particularly the uh, NYC Open Data Project that you helped uh, shepherd for us. Absolutely. It's uh, great to be here and a part of the conversation here at South by Southwest. Um, until a couple months ago, I was the Chief Technology Officer of New York City. And in that role, I tried to make the city future ready. And we talked about that every single day. What could we be doing to make the city work better for people? That meant stuff that could help them right away. And some stuff that might be transformational and might take a little bit longer. And uh, talking to the folks of the Filecoin Foundation, I saw an opportunity to think differently about how we stored and hosted data. Uh, to think about how we could take the open data movement that really over the last decade plus has exploded here in the United States and around the world. Uh, and to make that something that was really um, by the people for the people, something that could be decentralized, something where we didn't need to rely on just a few companies, but it could actually be something really truly open. And in that process, save a lot of taxpayer dollars and free them up for better, higher use case uh, to really make our government open by default. So that was the recent experience. Um, go back before that, and I got most interested in blockchain and decentralized technologies uh, when I was thinking about identity. And that was while I was working at Microsoft previously, uh, which sounds like a bit of a, a contrast, working for a major global company that's very centralized uh, and thinking about decentralization. But I think that's what we're all tasked with, is no matter where we're sitting, let's think about how things could be better, uh, what the future of technology can and should be. And that's what this conversation here today has been all about. So, so talking about New York, I think what I find most interesting about New York and, and, and this uh, decision to, to, you know, to put their data on Filecoin, and, and I mean, there's really like a message that's being sent here that you know, I, I think is very amplified by just the fact that it's New York City doing this. It's not you know, some insignificant place, but there's, you know, I think there's a broader message being sent here about just cities fostering innovation and cities competing for talent in an age of remote work where we can kind of live and work anywhere we want. And, you know, I want to go live in a place that's supportive of the values and sort of the, you know, the, you know that's, that, that's pro-innovation, right? So maybe talk a bit about the significance of this and, um, and what does this mean for other cities and other jurisdictions that are looking to be innovative and competitive in terms of, you know, whether we're talking about Web3 or whether we're talking about other, other areas of innovation as well, or just, just competing for, for, you know, remote worker talent and tax dollars, I guess. Well, New York City is not just a place with 9 million people and visitors and tourists. It's also the home to the second largest tech ecosystem on the planet. And if you're going to be a tech ecosystem, you've got to constantly be evolving with the changing landscape and, and as new technologies uh, emerge. And so for New York City, and this is something that it's not just me saying this, but the, the current mayor, Eric Adams, who took office in January, has been really clear that he wants to make sure that the city of New York is at the forefront of hosting, inviting, being open to the industries of the future. Uh, and so he's, he's focused on cryptocurrency. And what we did last year, starting with this experiment, to test out what decentralized storage looks like, what the Filecoin network could do, both in terms of saving money, in terms of resilience, a bunch of potential benefits for people, but it's only real when you have hard data. And so that's what's happening right now, is that the city of New York and Filecoin are measuring exactly what is happening, what the impact of storage on Filecoin is versus on the hyperscale cloud providers, which can be, uh, could be very expensive in some cases. So, so that's what, what the opportunity is. And as you pointed out, if you can make it in New York City, you can make it anywhere. And I really believe that, that this is uh, a type of technology that every public servant should be thinking about. 
Because they're trying to do the best job for the people they serve, their constituents. You gotta think about how you ensure resiliency, redundancy, low latency, low cost, all the things that really benefit people. The reasons that we make data open in the first place is for researchers and journalists and academics and entrepreneurs and anybody to make the best use of it that they can. Well, the more data that we have at the lowest cost, again, lowest latency, resiliency, we have confidence it's gonna be around for the long run, that's a good thing for society. And so I'd love to see more cities and municipalities looking at um, the Filecoin Foundation, this network, this opportunity, and learning from what New York has done and perhaps running their own experiments in the future. Great, and I, I love this conversation about, about innovation um, because it, or, or, you know, cities innovating because it, in this realm because it, it, it really ties hand in hand with the question of sustainability, right? And um, with that, I'm gonna hand this over to Alan, who is the, the mastermind behind Filecoin Green. So I'd love to kind of, love for you to give us kind of a quick uh, flyover of what Filecoin Green is, very exciting initiative. And um, you know, what do folks here need to know about Filecoin Green? Yeah, thank you. So Filecoin Green is our initiative to bring the benefits of Web3 and how we work with data to sustainability reporting. And so right now, we know how to measure emissions, right? There's the greenhouse gas protocol. If you're a company, you can try to figure out what all your inputs are, how much fuel you burn, where your electricity comes from, and at the end of the year, you can report on what your impacts were. We want to take all of that and build that into the technology that we're building in Web3 at the deepest level. So you're not just working with old data from a year ago trying to work out what are, what are those impacts, but as you do things in Web3, right, as you store data, as you buy an NFT, as you make a transaction, you're able to just see transparently what are the environmental impacts of that action right now. And if you are a program, right, if you're not a person, you're a program, you have that information available to you. And so you have the, the tools in order to understand what your options are. What am I trying to do? What are my options? Can I choose to reduce my impacts and go with options that lower those? And in Filecoin, our whole ethos, right, is to move from location addressing to content addressing. So can we take ways of working with data, which previously relied on trusting that whoever was holding that data wouldn't change it, would keep it there, and relied on all of these data schemas that were ultimately walled gardens, in which some large company is putting a lot of effort into maintaining that walled garden um, the, the way it is, right? And puts a lot of effort into making sure all these data schemas interoperate. Can we just build the technology in a way that you are able to get this verifiability and interoperability just built into the way we work the content address data. So if I believe these are my environmental impacts, I not only take those claims on faith, but I actually am able to trace them back to the underlying data sets that back up those environmental impacts. And so in Filecoin right now, we've, we've built this into what we're doing. So we're able to go to filecoin.energy. You can see the energy used by any node in the Filecoin system. And as we are connecting the network with renewable energy, you're able to see how does that node use energy, where is that energy coming from, and specifically which renewable energy source is generating the energy to store my data. Wow. So, so yeah, Filecoin Green. This is. I mean, this is. Def, uh, what I love about this is that it's. It's not just sort of you know greenwashing or or just you know like kind of virtue signaling, but it's like this is provable, uh, or it's not just sort of you know retroactive reporting. Well, I think we had you know a third of our energy came from renewable. You know, it's not just like some self-reporting kind of. You know, you're just trusting people that reported accurately, but it's provable. It's on. It's you know it's on chain. It's all verifiable, and um, you know I, I think it's just a really you know. I think it's a game changer for, for you know, basically like, you know, whether it's public servants in, in New York or whether it's, you know, any company that uses data, which is everybody, right? So um, really exciting initiative. I know that one of our, our big priorities of Filecoin for, you know, this coming year is really kind of injecting ourselves into this conversation on the, on the sustainability front. Um, 